Oh my god. Let's see if uh, we can isolate the, the fur to, the, to be a beard. So right now it's covering the whole object of the face. So it's making this huge fuzzy ball. But I want to isolate it so that it's just around his like cheek area. Let's see if we can figure that out. So in this demo, I'll be covering Blender's new 3.5 quick fur feature, which allows you to add hair particles to an object without using what was before particle systems. Let's call this one beard. I just want to see now if it keeps the... Okay, cool. So now we have a beard mesh that sits on top of the face. And I want that beard object to be parented to the face. So let's shift select that and then that. Oops. Object. So I just want to make sure if I move this it should follow. Okay, now that we have an object that sits on top of the face, I want to add the beard. And now it's, um, let's try adding quick for this way. Okay, there we go. A little too bushy though, can't even see anything. But at least that's a start. It's not all over the object now, it's now just to, just the surface of the object that we wanted it. This is a good starting point, right? We, we want the, the beard is where we want it. We just want to comb it down. Do this. So these curves here for the quick fur actually determine the length of the beard being rendered. So I'm just I'm trying to drag some of this stuff down. Let's do from the front too. We have a lot from the side actually. At this point I realize there are certain portions of the face I don't want covered by the beard. So I'm going back into the, the duplicate mesh I made for the beard to cover and I'm editing out the areas that I don't want to have the beard by deleting the vertices. This are just a random fruit here. Let's delete that. Make sure it still renders the face. Okay, cool. Let's take this out. Okay. Let's uh, unhide everything. And here I'm going one more time back into the vertices to adjust the beard exactly where I want it. So I'm just removing additional vertices around the cheek area. Okay. Let's go back into object mode. Just quick for this. Scope those downwards. <laughs> it's kind of funny that this looks like the sideburn. In Blender 3.5, there are added features in sculpt mode specifically for the quick fur feature that allow you to manipulate and move the fur more organically. Um, some of those features include the comb mode which is probably what you'll be using first to kind of shape your beard. And then other features like snake hook to pull the beard down and grow and shrink to add vertices to your curves on quick fur. Grow shrink is pretty good. That one's pretty straightforward. Yes. Okay, we're getting the beard bush here. Yeah, the best tools I think are comb. Snake looks kind of good too. 
because it's an easy way to extend out the beard. Because if you use something like Grow Shrink, it's a little too much. It's a little too fast. It's almost helpful to hide the rest of your object that you're making the beard from so you can comb it from the inside. The actual curves that adjust the beard by going into your viewport tab or even like your wireframe. The cool thing about Quick Fur is it's gener it generates using these curves. So if I just delete some of these with a selection tool, it'll shorten the length of it for me. So like if I think this section is too long here, I can delete that. And we got a huge jumble mesh here. Just deleting strands that I don't think add to the shape that I want. The basics of the quick fur object are the set of modifiers. So set hair curve profile, adjust the, the width of a hair strand. So you want to adjust radius, make those hair strands wider or thinner. Put mine at 0 0.0025 here. Can even make it smaller. What shape does is it determines how fast it'll fall off from the beginning of your hair strand where it connects to the end. So if you increase this, it'll fall off a lot harder. So if you put it at one, it should fall off completely. And if you put it at zero, the fall off is less distinct. Interpolate controls how much density of hair strands are added on top of your curves that you can use to edit. So see how there's these strands. These strands control the shape of your quick fur or your beard. So if you increase this, this should increase the, the follicles. So, but this one you have to increase quite a bit in a, a bigger magnitude. You can't just drag it along. So if I bump it up by that, you can see that it added more. It's adding more fullness to the beard. For hair curves noise, this is good for kind of randomizing the shape of your beard and where it's applied. So, but to, as you can see, I can randomize the beard pretty easily under seed. Find something that I think is pretty good. And I can just hold on to that. Whoa. Distance controls the intensity of it. I don't want it too far away from the shape that I want or I was thinking of, which is kind of like this bushy cone. Frizz hair curve. It's kind of the same idea as hair curves noise, except it's a little bit more subtle when you adjust the seed. It generally keeps the shape more defined, but adds more variation to the frizz of the individual strands here. Okay, now that we have the general shape and the frizziness of our beard, what we can do is open up the asset browser by opening, dragging that new window over. And if you got Blender 3.5, it should have all your, your hair modifiers, the new ones added in. And now what you can do is you can just quickly add on top 
of the existing quick frame modifiers, these variations of um, of modifiers. You can see like we can add this roll feature on top of the beard. It looks like it's um, it's adding kind of like a curl at the ends. This clumping. Oh yes, that that's exactly what I kind of was looking for. Something that ties the shape of that bit better. But maybe we don't want it that shaped. We want something like that. This is nice though, the clumping of these shapes. So if I make it too sharp though, it looks too groomed. But this works pretty good too, so. Whoa. What's awesome about this setup is that it you can adjust it in edit mode. Like these individual vector points to shape how you will we want the beard to kind of like move around. Like if I really want this to pop out, I can use the the vector point of this curve here just to pull it. It's like, oh, I, I want this strand a little bit longer. All I have to do is pull this out. You apply the quick for object. It has the modifiers already set up. Then once you go in to your essentials here, um, under your asset browser in 3.5, which is already here by default, you can just drag in, they call them, deformation. These are the modifiers that you can have on top of your, your base quick for object to modify the shape and define it and customize it to your liking. Out of all the deformation and guide modifiers, I think uh, clump hair curves is probably my favorite because it's easy to toggle and adjust. And I want the expression to be where people look at, not like too much where the frizz is for this character. So I'm trying to keep it more contained, but there is a little frizz to make it look like the beard is slightly unkempt and it's just like overgrowing. So the clump hair curves is really good at doing that because I can, you know, control the tip spread if I want it less unkempt, the shape if I want it sharper, factor to control the the tips or the tapering to the end of the the follicles well all right guys thank you guys for watching that's basically it for this video don't forget to subscribe uh, and leave a comment what do you guys think about the process down below try out the new quick fur feature see if it works for you definitely is going to be part of my workflow have a good day guys <laughs>